have to do an intro? I mean, no, you should probably just tell them what podcast this is. And, and you know, in case they didn't know what they clicked on. Hello, everyone. And welcome. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your face. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the What Happened podcast, where uh, two myself... Question two question marks. Two question marks. Where myself and my co-host, Mr. Owen... Um, was I supposed to say something there? I was expecting you to say your name, but you know we're past this that me, now. I guess. Mr. Owen. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple wacky um, historical events for you. Can I, I first mention I love the candle setup in here? Yeah, I got three, three of candles them going. burning, which well, is just a massive fire hazard. I'll be honest, add. my baseline mm. is living in squalor. So, so you like candles specifically for me? It smelled a little funky in here before you it. showed up. I get it. So I, I've had these candles going twenty four seven. All right. Well, I think I went first last week, so. So that means I go first this week. Yeah. All right. So Ryan, have you heard of the dancing mania, and or the dancing plague of the 14th to 16th century? This is what the Kevin Bacon movie Footloose was based on. You know, right? I do have a couple of references to Footloose in my notes, um, but I think it was directly based off it, from what I've heard. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a solid no. Um, but anyways, it spanned from like 1374 to 1518, but there are like a lot of earlier accounts, but they're not well documented, so people really just say 1374 to 1518. So, That's like 200 years. Correct. Of dancing. We'll delve in. Well, I don't think it's like 200 straight years of it. I think it's like multiple accounts throughout these years, and I think the last well-documented account was 1518. Could you imagine dancing for 200 years straight? I don't think they lived for the, what, what, like dancing corpses. Well, just I, hypothetically, I don't know. No. Do you get <laughs> it, like, because if I go to a wedding, and they're like, oh, you want to dance? I'm on there for like a minute, and then I'm like, all right, see ya. See, I don't dance. I, I'm like the guy that stands in the corner of the dance floor and like awkwardly moves my arms, and then someone looks at me, and I just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I always get peer pressured into it. Same. So and I then, go to the corner of the dance okay, floor. Okay, okay. See, I, I, I always feel obligated to like get in the middle bust a quick move and then i'm your break dancer you look like a break dancer yeah i, I feel like you get down do a move like hurt yourself and then like crawl well yeah because i come to every wedding in an adidas tracksuit just so i can <laughs> with i bring my own cardboard too do you wear that underneath your suit yeah so i can take it off yeah. bust a move at a wedding and then like take out the cardboard unfold it yeah and then fold it back and just walk away and <laughs> yeah. no one sees you for the rest of the night but you know dancing for 200 years sounds terrible so to circle back, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so like like I said, the first like real recorded episode was in 1374. So I've written here. It's a nice story. 646 years ago. I did the math. I did it actually twice. I got it wrong the first time and I used a calculator. So <laughs> I don't know how you managed that one. Yeah, I got like a negative number and it wasn't anywhere near 600. So I just don't really understand what I did. <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm used to a graphing calculator, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway 646 years ago the residents of aachen germany okay double a c h e n aachen double a c h e n yeah aachen yeah yeah that's that what sounds i think about right. yeah so i'll point to you every time i'm gonna say it okay uh germany filled the streets of a small city where they began to dance uncontrollably now this like like i said earlier this was the first written account of the dancing mania or the less common name choreomania Choreomania. Choreomania. Interesting. I'm, I'm just going to call it the dancing mania or okay. plague. Uh, so choreomania would begin to spread all over Europe with many of the accounts spanning from the banks of the Rhine. So from Germany, France, Belgium to the Netherlands and even parts of Italy, the plague spread for the next 200 years. Uh, it caused the death of untold numbers. Obviously, people weren't great historians back then, so it's pretty hard to document how many people actually died from it. But uh, many accounts even show that it ended up... At, hitting like the great holy roman empire which i don't really remember how long that spanned for so i don't know if that was in like the early years of the plague i think a while correct yeah. i just don't know how like i don't know I'm not a great historian i'm just doing this <laughs> sorry he's just staring blankly at me <laughs> all right so anyways um so when it first started in Aachen, uh, the Aachen, Aachen uh, the mania was dubbed Saint John's disease, uh, and many believed, as in like the priests, because everyone listened to like only priests back then, um, that it was actually from um, a curse from a saint. So that's why it was called 
um, the St. John's disease because a lot of people believe St. John was cursing these people to dance. I don't know if he, like, had something to do with dance before he died or something. Well, dancing is the devil's work, naturally. So. Well, yeah, but why would said... it be a curse from a saint and not just, like, the devil possess- possessing them? I don't know, man. I'm not, like, a, a insane priest from the 1300s, so I couldn't tell you. That's fair. All right, so uh, many believe that it was a curse from St. John himself, which is why it was dubbed St. John's disease. Um, so this first true written instance of it, uh, was written down in a book. I mean, it was written down in 1888, so it was a little while after. Um, but it was written in 1888 by Justice Frederick Carl Hecker, and he describes the mania and Aachen as, quote, they form circles hand in hand and appearing to have lost all control over their senses, continued dancing regardless of the bystanders for hours together in wild delirium until at length they fell to the ground in a state of exhaustion. That just sounds like a party correct how's that a curse uh there's more to this quote sir oh my bad <laughs> then they complained of extreme oppression and groaned as if in the agonies of death until they were swathed in cloth bound tightly round their waist upon which they again recovered and remained free from complaint until the next attack so they would dance their little hearts out so it just sounds like people would just like dance and then there was just a dude like standing there with like linen and then like once you like dropped he would just wrap you up and be like stay down and then you would just like recover rip the linen off and just keep dancing. Now what I know of dehydration and overexertion and heat exhaustion you probably don't want to after someone's been dancing out in the sun for like the entire day you probably don't, don't want to wrap them up in a nice thick wool blanket. I don't think they knew that back then because don't forget these people also thought it was a curse from a saint. So, yeah, yeah. I, d- I don't think there was one guy being like, hey, they're going to overheat. <laughs> <laughs> they need fluid replacement. <laughs> um, so, after this first recording in Aachen, it was also recorded in the German towns of Liege, Utrecht, and Tongres. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. Of Netherlands and Belgium. So, that's not Germany. But that's like, touches Germany, I believe. So, like, this was calling Germany. Um, I mean, at one point, they were Germany. It's very good. Oh. <laughs> I think that was a little later. <laughs> um so there are other reports that suggest that this uh dated as far back as 1021 in the german town of kolbig kolbig it's k-o with two dots l-b-i-g-k kolbig it's like kolbig sounds right kolbig we'll call it kolbig um so there was a report in 1021 but it wasn't well documented um so that's why a lot of people just kind of dub it as like the 1300s when it started um there was also one account in 1247 in the town of erfurt germany oh erfurt Exactly. If I could give you a little foreshadowing, that's where my story takes place. Oh, does it really? Yeah, Erfurt. Oh. Erfurt. Is it? I don't know how to say it. Um, what, does it also take place in Maastricht, Germany? Because there is one account where 200 people tragically died from the dancing plague in Maastricht, but that was because they decided to dance on a bridge, and the bridge collapsed. I mean, don't you think you should future-proof a bridge? You to, know? like, know people are going to dance on it? Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, when I build this bridge, I want to make sure that... At least 150 people can dance <laughs> on it at a time without it breaking. But, like, can you imagine you're dancing for hours so far that, like, the bridge collapsed and then you're just so tired that you're just like, nah. <laughs> I'm just going to drown here now, I guess. <laughs> what a way to go. Um, so, like I said earlier, during the Middle Ages, the church believed that these dances, these dancers were possessed by the devil or cursed by saints. A lot of people argued. I could care less who argued or who decided what. Really weird scenario. Um so when these people were dancing like in the streets and stuff, priests would go around and just like chuck holy water on you and like pray next to you as you're just dancing. So they did kind of, you know, they cooled you down a little bit. I mean, yeah. Because, like, <laughs> you know, you see people on like ecstasy or like raves. Yeah, they're all you, sweating yeah, like just crazy. throw some water on yourself. They're good. Yeah, that keep them amazing. going. <laughs> um, so many family members would even like come out to the streets and like beg priests and be like, look, my uncle's just been dancing for like 17 hours. Can you do something <laughs> about it? Like... <laughs> Uncle Jimmy's just going off. Yo, can you help my Uncle Todd? I think think his shoes are wearing out. (laughs) Um, So, I guess, like, people would just, like, berate the priests to, like, do something. Because, like I said, everyone back then, it was all about the church. So, the priests were the ones in control, and the priests were the ones that could do something about it. Naturally. Um, I guess there's a lot of recordings of, like, people that would just, like, while dancing, would just scream and beg for forgiveness until they died as there's, like, <laughs> priests trying to chuck holy water on them. So it wasn't, like, an entertaining thing. Could you imagine a guy just being like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. How oh, uh, sorry. As a priest is chucking holy water yeah, on him. he's doing, like, he, the jig. He's just doing the robot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so the disease went by many names. Um, it went by Tarantism in Italy, believe it or not, and St. Vitus disease also in Italy and or the Middle Ages. So it just went by a ton of different names. No one, I don't think anyone really correlated, like, the multiple cases happening. I don't know. Like I said, I don't think they were really smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the last recorded case was in 1518, and, um... When I was looking this up, I got multiple different like reports of where this actually took place. It said it was either in Italy or I got Strasbourg, Strasbourg, which doesn't sound like Italy. That sounds like Germany yeah, to me. Yeah, it's Germany. It's a famous um, city in Germany. So I got multiple different towns, but I know for a fact it was in 1518, and it was documented that a woman named Fra Trophy, it's German, so that didn't sound German at all to me. Um, Is it Frau? F-R-A-U, Frau, Frau. Frau? I think Fra- that's a, Yeah, like Fraulein. I don't know, I've just seen Indiana Jones a bunch. I get it. <laughs> um, so it said that she began dancing. She just walked in the middle of the town and just started dancing. And over the next four days, 33 other people would join her in the town center. Um, over the next month in this town, over 400 more would join in to dance. Um, the town of Strasbourg, believe it or not, they decided that, you know, the priests weren't doing enough, right? So the town mayor, whatever you want to call him back then, decided that we're going to build a stage and hire a band. And we're going to play this band with all these people dancing, hoping to, like, somehow counteract their dancing by just giving them now music to dance to. Well, if they're just dancing, and then we play music when the song ends, they'll stop dancing. Exactly. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, people apparently just kept dancing, uh, believe it or not. Um, so, at its height, it said that, like, 15 people a day were dying from this mania, mania back in 1518 in this town. So, like, because they, they got about, like, 400 people in total to join in, and then, like, 15 people a day would just drop. I have no idea if Fra or whatever her name was one of the uh, the victims here, but I know she started dancing, so. That kind of sucks, though. Yeah. So, naturally speaking, the main cause of deaths were, like, you know, heat exhaustion, peer exhaustion, probably cardiac arrest, that kind of stuff. No one really documented it. They probably just, like, pushed you off the dance floor and then kept Put the party you in a going. Big hole. Yeah, exactly, and just, like, made sure the party could keep going, you know? Yeah. Um... Official numbers of the death is just absolutely unknown. Um, so from books and diaries, it's clear that um, some unknown reason the people of Germany dance until their death. Uh, there are many firsthand accounts, but a lot of them are just like, like I said earlier, people were just like pleading in agony as they danced. And it was just like, that had to be a goddamn show to just watch. Oh, <laughs> but you're just doing like an Irish step dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, so also there's other reports that people while dancing suffered quote horrible visions i couldn't find anything more on that so i don't know if they were just like picturing a disco ball as they were going or i i don't really know what was happening probably some weird like religious vision yeah so um there are many different beliefs as to what caused this like i said some people believed it was a curse from the saints some people believed it was uh, a curse from the devil italy kind of took a more practical stance and was like oh this is from uh, a spider venom i don't i've never been to italy okay. i don't know the kind of spiders they have there but it sounds like a wild spider. It seems more practical than being like, this is this is a saint. This is St. John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, naturally, like I said, the church believed there was a saint. They also believed, I don't know if this was the church or, like, town officials, but they also believed it was the work of a dancing cult and apparently looked, like, heavily into this. A dancing what? Cult. I don't really know a cult that would just send its members out to die. I mean, that's dancing. most cults. Do. Yes, but, like, just, like, dancing in the streets, you know? It's no Charles Manson, but it's... It would get you jail time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did have a nice quote here. I said this was the mid- medieval equivalent of Footloose. You know, people would just dance. The government didn't want them. The priest didn't want them to do it. But they would do it. Whether they knew and had any control over it or not, they did it. They knew that dancing was the right way to spend their time, apparently. Instead of, like, working in a field till you... Till yeah, you just became, died. Like, died yeah. at 45. Yeah, so why not die at 26 while dancing, right? makes sense to me yeah i would do it um so modern science has a double couple different theories on what actually happened i think one of the main theories is that it was a poisoning that is known as ergot poisoning um oh, ergot you say do you know what ergot is owen so it was a fungus that grew on rye so people think that it was just like traveling up and down the rhine river and it was like growing on their their crops and then people were eating the rye bread or whatever it is do you know what ergot was discovered to be? I do not. So I, I think it was in like the 50s or 40s maybe. Okay. There was this German scientist. Good start. Keeping it Germany. So he was at his lab or whatever. And then... Oh. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 
he was he was eating some bread. Okay. And then he um was riding his bike home, and he just started like tripping balls. <laughs> was he dancing? No, he was just riding his bike, and okay. it was just like whoa. <laughs> and uh, so he went back and he analyzed it, and uh, he discovered a compound that was later discovered to be LSD. So er- er- ergot was what he had. Yeah. So ergot poisoned his rye or whatever. Yeah. He ate that bread that contained it. He tripped out, and then with modern science, he discovered that that it's LSD. what it was, and then someone just converted it to like a, a common street drug. Yeah. Some somewhere along the way. Yeah. So now the '60s came along. Well, it's come full circle because like, can I just like order rye bread with ergot? <laughs> I think that'd be a little <laughs> hard to find. But if you think about it, it's like come full circle because people in 1300s mm-hmm. were just dancing, tripping on LSD. Of course. And now people just do that voluntarily at like it. a hard summer or whatever. Yeah. Some Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. That would now they actually have music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's also another modern theory. Um, this one's not as relatively believed because I think science really backs up the ergot poisoning or I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Ergot. I think it's ergot. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not a scientist. Um, but the other theory is that it was caused by quote mass psychogenic illness triggered by fear and depression. And this is backed up because, uh, the accounts of 1374 and the accounts of 1518 were preceded by periods of famine, crop failure, and just like widespread disease. So I think they just think it was like an emotional trigger for these people. And then they were just like, let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> they were so depressed that they just decided to answer this depression with dance. I mean, that, like, if I was forced to live back then, I would probably do that. Just be like, I you can't. know what? I can't take this anymore. I'm going to die the way that I want to die. Get Sally out in the street and just start dancing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so like I said. Uh, there are many other cases that have been documented, but the most well-known are 1374 and 1518. I think 1518 is the most well-documented one because they, like, know exactly who it was that started it. Um, there's, like, there's cases all throughout, like, Germany, and the, basically it just kind of follows along the Rhine River, which is, like, kind of odd, but there had to be clear ergot poisoning there or yeah, just severe depression. Yeah, I guess depression. that's how the fungus spread. Yeah. yeah, or just, like, you know, widespread depression upon a river. So, yeah, I get it. I mean, a lot of depression went along the Rhine throughout history many years <laughs> um but yeah so ryan what are your thoughts um that's even though you've pitched in this entire time but i wrote it down as a question so i'm gonna <laughs> ask you <laughs> i mean that's definitely pretty wacky i mean if you just think about like food state food safety standards yeah like mad cow disease back in the day yeah um I mean, we've definitely come a long way because now, like, when one person gets E. coli from, like, some lettuce, it's on the news. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, mass recalls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, versus, like, I don't know, people are just dancing. Just and Just eat and, the bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I have. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a saint did it. Who knows? <laughs> Spiders. Uh, yeah, but that is the story of the dancing mania back that's, in the uh, 13th and 15th century. That's pretty wacky. I did enjoy that story. Thank you, sir. Um, I am very excited for your story. Oh, and... Let, with the Germany theme. Let me ask you a question. I, I'm ready for any question. Do you like to poop? Uh, like four or five times a day. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because um, the next story is about poop. You have my attention. This is the Erfurt latrine disaster. I love that it's Erfurt. I love that we kept it not even within Germany somehow. I mean, mine was a little more. But like we both have an Erfurt. Like they haven't had good history. It's almost like we planned this. Not entirely, yeah. but yes, we both looked these up separately, and we're like, "Oh, let's do it together." But so that's on me. <laughs> so uh, toilet science has come a long way on. Toilet science is that what you just toilet said? Toilet science. All right. Right now, you you poop in the toilet. Yeah, I mean, I've seen an out, like a porta potty. Is that modern day outhouse? Yeah, I mean, outhouses still exist. You know that, right? Do they? Yeah. Like you ever go Amish? hiking? You're talking about the Amish. Yeah, you ever go hiking? Yes. You poop in an outhouse? No, I just find like a like you know, like a well walked trail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into this. The year is eleven eighty four, okay? And um this is called the Erfurt Latrine disaster, or in German, the Erfurt Latrinen Latrinensters. I like that they just add, like, stir to the end of it, and it's German. Yeah, that's how German works, man. You just add some Zs really weird and a vowels K and, and, stuff. and you're yeah. good. Um, so this took place in the city of Erfurt, which is the capital of 
Thuringia, which is a province in Germany, or at the time was a province. I don't know okay. if it still is a province. Yeah, I didn't look it up. So basically, um, at this time, Louis the uh, Third, who was the landgrave of Thuringia. I don't know what a landgrave is, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's a title of some sort. I think he like, owns does he owns land. the land, so he gets to decide who gets buried there? Something like that. Or he might be like in charge of it. He might okay. be like the king of Thuringia. Of just called? that province. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not going to so, challenge you on this. <laughs> I didn't look it up, so I don't know. So Louis the Third and uh, Conrad Wittelsbach. Wait, his name's Conrad? Yeah. He's also known as Archbishop Conrad of Mainz. So they were fighting over um, land ever since Richard the Lionheart ceded his land to Emperor Frederick the First. Of course. Um, so basically, um, uh, Richard the Lionheart was fighting against the Holy Roman Empire and then he gave up and he gave all his land back to Frederick. And then Frederick divvied it out as he saw fit. Um, and then basically Conrad and Louis were fighting over how much. Is your mic bright? Not yet. So it has a really bright light. <laughs> <laughs> so basically they were fighting over. Um... At least I don't have a lava lamp. You want me to turn it on? I'll turn <laughs> I would on my actually love if you turn it on. Just right. stare at it the it whole time. It takes a while to heat up, but I can do it. Are you going to cut this out? <laughs> no, this is staying in. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, Conrad and uh, Louis were fighting over land. Um, are you just going to stare at the lava lamp this entire episode? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ignore you and just watch the lava It's bubbling. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, while on a military campaign against Poland, King Henry the Henry or King Heinrich, because he's German, not like King Henry of England. We'll call him King he- King Heinrich. Okay, thank you. Uh, King Heinrich the sixth of the Hohenstaufen dynasty. I love that. He was staying in Erfurt when he heard about this land dispute. Okay. So he invited a bunch of nobles from across the uh, Holy Roman Empire for a mediation. And this uh, date was set to be on July 25th. Okay. Um, so some of the nobles included Count Frederick Abenberg, Count Henry of Thurgia, Count Gosmer of Hesse, Count Frederick of Kir- Kirchba- Kirchberg, and uh, Bouchard. Common spelling, I'm sure. uh, Oh, yeah, common spelling. On Thank Kirchberg. you. Sorry. And uh, Bouchard of Wartburg. Which sounds like a terrible place. Yeah, Wartburg. <laughs> um, so the meeting was set to take place in um, the Church of St. Peter, okay. which sat on top of Petersburg Hill in Erfurt. Uh, it was in the northwest corner of Erfurt, if you oh, must thank know. thank you. Thank you. Um, and so the Church of St. Peter has been expanded over the years into like this giant citadel and fortress. But at the time this meeting was held... Um, they were just meeting in the original monastery, also called Peter Skirsch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're doing better pronouncing this than I am. So Peter Skirsch was built between 1103 and 1147. It took 37 years to build. Jeez. Um, and it was, at the time of this meeting, it, it was 37 years old. Sorry, I read my notes wrong. It didn't take 37 years to build. Oh, it was 37 years old. Yeah. It was 37 oh, how many years, years did it take? Uh, it was constructed between 1103 and 1147. 44 years? 40, <laughs> 44 years. Um, so the monastery had been used uh, for many years to like for worship and to hold uh, what's called an imperial diet. <laughs> well, Did they just like eat certain foods? We'll get into the, what, oh, a, okay. what a diet right. is later. Uh, but it's spelt the exact same way. So fun facts... Um, this is where, like, this specific church is where Richard the Lionheart formally surrendered to Frederick the First. Oh, fun fact, right there. So back to diets. Um, a diet is a deliberative body of representatives from estates all across the Holy Roman Empire. So these weren't necessarily legislative bodies; rather, uh, people would come and present their respective opinions on issues. Okay. But ultimately, the Holy Roman Emperor would have the final say. So basically, he would invite nobles, he would hear what the nobles had to say, and then he could he would decide if he wanted to listen to them or not. Yeah, or so, just like make his own rule. Yeah, so they didn't really have any power, it was just more of like a, what do you guys think? 
like a general meet and greet. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, there's, there's like potluck. Yeah. Someone brings a casserole. <laughs> so uh, the Church of St. Peter was about 75 meters long. And it had, uh, the first floor had wooden planks running along the length of the floor. So your standard wooden floor. Thank you. And then it had uh, alcoves every so often along the wall. Fancy. So um, beneath the first floor was a basement. And this basement is where a latrine was stored. So. Was this just like like a wooden plank with a hole in it with just like a hole dug? So back in the day. Because um, I know like the ancient Romans had like plumbing. Yeah, the, but I think it kind of disappeared in like the medieval times. The uh, medieval bros sort of forgot about all that. I get it. So what they did was they basically in the basement of this church they built a big hole, and so then it people just would stewed. Yeah, just stewed. They would just poop in there. What and, month was this meeting? Uh, July twenty fifth. Yeah. <laughs> so it was bacon. <laughs> so I mean, you can't get that hot in Germany, right? I'm not a Germanographer. I don't know. Um, so yeah, there's just a, under the first floor, there was just a big vat of Yuck. liquid poop, basically. Ugh. Um, so during the meeting, how many times are you going to drop your phone? I didn't drop it that time. Dude, I got cat-like reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> during the meeting, um, nobles, uh, da, 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 hold on, let me read my notes. Hold them up. Okay, so they were meeting there. They were holding the diet, being like, hey, Louis, hey, Conrad, we got to figure this out about the land. There were 60-plus people in there. Wait, you're just staring at a lava lamp, dude? You want me to turn it off? You're getting distracted. <laughs> Continue. Right, so there's 60-plus nobles in there, and their combined weight on this old building okay. and poor construction oh, no. practices I, I see where this is going. caused the floor to <laughs> collapse. <laughs> Wait, how many people? So it collapsed right above the latrine. Oh no! And, and I'm sure there's no like, you know, porta potty guy coming out of the big vacuum sucking all that out. No, right? it's, it's full. Ugh. It's full. It's hot. It's stewing. Yuck! And, really uh, muddy. <laughs> so it's estimated that between sixty and a hundred nobles. Oh my god! Fell into a pool of liquid human excrements, <laughs> and either died from their injuries from the fall, or drowned in the human waste. Ugh! Ugh! Fun fact, King, King How Heinrich. How deep is that? So people would drown in it? Yeah. People, so it was like feet deep. It was. Or someone would just get like a lung full of like <laughs> just poop water and just. <laughs> it was probably feet deep. Also, can you imagine getting like a nasty gash, but like you survived that, but it, you've just been infected with like human waste. And they don't have any form of antibiotics. No, nah, they probably just thought it was the devil again. Yeah. <laughs> the devil turned your arm black, sir. Sorry. Uh, King Heinrich, the guy who was holding the meeting, okay. survived because oh, unfortunate. he was sitting in one of the alcoves when the... Um, so he watched everyone else fall? He watched... Well, the floor beneath him collapsed, but okay. he managed to hold on to... Oh, that's badass Like right a there. bar on the um, stained glass behind him. Ooh. And he just hung there until people could like <laughs> come and get him. <laughs> so he's probably there for like over an hour just being like, help, that's it smells. <laughs> As people are just like writhing and... Poo water. I'm like just like yelling in agony. Yeah. Ugh. So, anyways, be thankful for the fact that your toilet flushes. I'm just, I, I'm lost for words because <laughs> I'm just imagining a bunch of like dudes in like robes and stuff, just like screaming as they're. Well, because they're all they're up. all nobles too, so they're yeah. all probably dressed like older in like fat guys, right? Older fat guys, maybe some ladies in there, some like lords and ladies. Okay. And but they're all dressed in their Sunday best because they're at like an official yeah meet and greet meeting <laughs> with the emperor. Oh well, not God. the emperor, just a king, but still. And then, jeez, so they're all probably wearing like nice jewelry. Did you say how many people? Sixty to a hundred or died to die. or fell. Died. Oh God! So a lot more fell. Could you imagine being a priest? You got, like, that brown robe, that stupid haircut. Yeah, I love that. It's better airflow. You're, you're just you're just taking a poop, reading the Bible, oh, and some as dude's you like do, and play. then suddenly 60 people come crashing down. I mean, if he was constipated, he's not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, is there any, like, aftermath to that, or is that where the story ends? I think that's like, was there they, any like retrieval process I or would, did they just like close up the hole? <laughs> I would assume they made some people sift through the poop water to 
get all the uh... also do you think people like drowned because there was there was like no rescue effort and people were just poking through the hole being like yeah, it really sucks to be you <laughs> Like, I wouldn't go in there and rescue someone, would you? <laughs> well, when the king is like, how? <laughs> well, yeah, you get him, and then you're like, that's it. Yeah, nothing more I can do. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Jeez. So, yeah, that's the Erfurt latrine disaster. It's wild. I, did, I have not heard of that before. Like, I've heard a little bit about the dancing mania, but I've never heard of the latrine disaster. It's, um, it's a yucky one, I'll be honest. <laughs> that one might not be okay. <laughs> you want to edit that one? Might want to cut that one. <laughs> I don't know if you saw. I paused. I thought of it. I was like, "Do I say that?" <sighs> um. So, unless you have anything else to add, Owen. I do not. I think that uh, that covers it. We talked about our dancing habits. Talked a little bit about how Dunkin' Donuts tried to poison me. We went full circle today. That one might have been cut out. I don't remember. But if then that he was. just brought it back up at the yeah. end, so we're just gonna leave it a mystery. So they have, okay, <laughs> mystery it is. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks for joining us on uh, this episode of What Happened, episode um, two. Be back next week for episode three. Um, I'm sure Owen and I will dig up some some more wacky stories. Yeah, for I you. can't give you a spoiler because I look it up like 20 minutes before I talk about it. Yeah, so. I mean, you know. Yeah. What happened?